Hey everybody, welcome back to the All in Our Heads podcast, Valentine's Day, jubilee of love and fortune and happiness, extravaganza of awesomeness. That was a big flyer. There was a lot on that, yeah. a lot on that flyer. <laughs> there was a lot. We got Robin Ann in the chat. She says, oh, I came on the right time. Hi, fellas. Hey, happy V-Day. Happy V-Day, Valentine's Day, anniversary of the Valentine's Day Massacre, and love all across the land. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys do anything? No, she worked. Um, we, uh, I, I went out and got a chalk cover strawberries and cheesecake, and we had that for dinner. And uh, Okay. You know, come on, diet, so. <laughs> chocolate what was you got what you got chocolate covered strawberries and cheesecake slices at Wegmans you do that like on Wednesdays like it's nah not really I've been pretty good I've been I've been back to fasting oh that's good or as I like to call it um, anorexia's training wheels <laughs> <laughs> and I lost uh, two pounds I was just watching your clip that you put out from the I don't know what show you were at. I was like a fundraiser from like James from like. But you did that joke. I, I've seen the joke. I think you know where you, where they, uh, where you're uncomfortable when you swipe in. Yeah, yeah. You said like you know you know, good luck with your uh, attempt at uh, the change. Right. What I was gonna say. I think it's funny if you still want to do that joke. Is go. Oh, okay. Uh, well, we might need to reshow. We've we've done some. We've moved some machines around. You want us to come out there? Like like since you've been here last, we've done some rearranging. I don't know if you yeah. Need, would you like us to set you up with a a new guide because we've moved all the machines around? So now nah, that joke's on the album, so it's it's going into the. Oh, it's gone. I mean, you know, if I'm at a fundraiser, I gotta get some laughs. I'll bust it out, but you know, oh, yeah, yeah. trying. I've been trying really hard. The few times I'm able to get on stage or a Zoom shows to like fight doing as much old as I can I'm like just be uncomfortable man you're gonna find right. something just be uncomfortable no, none of this matters right now yeah it's the best time to it's like because you, you you can be up there and your ego like you'll have like this little bit of like you know you want to do it right and then you're like just fucking don't be a pussy man just fucking try this shit and it winds up right. being put it this way it winds up being halfway decent enough to know you have something but right, like your right. instinct is to puss out because you're like, oh, a hundred percent. It's already like most of the shows are uncomfortable to begin with. The Zoom, like, so you're like, I'm not sacrificing. I'm already sacrificing my soul for half of this. Right, exactly. So, anywho, got some good. I got some. Uh, I don't know. My brain is just. It's back to like thinking of shit. I'm like making notes. Like oh, I'm, that's I'm good. thinking funny. Like right, right. I don't know if it's. I mean, it's funny to me, right? I don't know. <laughs> All this shit could just die a, a quick right, death right. on stage. <laughs> but yeah, I, but I like that I'm in that mode, right, whether right. it's good or not, you know. But yep. val- Valentine's Day, I saw you uh, had a good Valentine's Day, right? Yeah, it's fucking fabulous. <laughs> Went to the laundromat. The laundromat. <laughs> I didn't even think about it until I was in there, like... And I'm looking around, and they, they hung hearts all over the place. And like, I was like, this is the last place you really need to make us feel like Valentine's. Just move on. We're coming in to clean our shit and go home. Yeah. But um, they had it all decorated out. And I was just looking around, and I, then I clicked. I'm like, doing laundry. It's all men. It's my stuff. There's no girls' clothes in here. I'm just, it's all me by myself, alone, doing my laundry. And I'm like, wow, this is fucking pathetic. <laughs> That's exactly how I felt. Yeah. Well, I now mean- it's, I'm done with the. I'm I'm so over. Yeah, you know, things like I'm just over it. It's just <laughs> over what you didn't over, finish that over, thought. You go, yeah, you know, I'm over it. <laughs> I'm over it. Basically, what I'm saying is I'm over the thing, the the fucking reasons why. Don't eat the mic so much. Look, keep it a little bit away from you because you start breaking do, it. First off, I'll do whatever I want to in my own house. I splash the pot if I want to splash the pot. Okay, so Don't what are you over? What are you over? You didn't finish that thought. You just said yeah. a few sound effects. Well, the, the sound of <laughs> meaning, I'm over the horse shit of telling, of trying to figure out why life is what it is. 
like why I'm alone and what's going on. And, you know, things will work. I'm done with it. It is what it is, man. Life, my life is this. Fuck trying to figure it out. It's, it is what it is. It is yeah, what it is. It is what it is. So no more Some people like, look at your life and be like, I wish I had that. No, I'll let them come on over for a couple of hours. <laughs> it's just that. No, see, Val- yeah, Valentine's Day is nice. You know, you're like, oh, I, I, but like, you know, there's a 364 days other than Valentine's Day where I'm like, I'd love to be alone in a in a fucking laundromat right now. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. <laughs> I, I'm just, my point was what that whole ne- the sound effects was, is that, you know, every, all the time you're like, you know, I'm alone, I'm single because, you know, this, this, and there's always like a reason, like why, the well, fuck all the reasons why. It is what it is. You're a lonely motherfucker. You put this on yourself, dude. This is not a, this isn't, like, this is your own doing. Like, yeah. I'm not a miserable, lonely, like, sad. That's not what I am because I'm fine. But there's elements of, like, a relationship that I don't have going on. I don't have potential of it going on. I don't have a could be going on. I don't have a, well, maybe if this girl, could, nothing, zilch, right? And I'm like, a, like, kind of like when it comes to that, I'm like, dead inside until I get a little horny and then I'm like oh, I want something and then I'm dead inside again it's like but I don't want to be dead inside yeah but I am I and think, yeah. I think a lot of it has to do with you know I mean I've been like this for a long time I can't blame the pandemic on the, my relationship status although I would like to um, but it's not helping me get out of it right Oh yeah, I mean it's how are you gonna meet you know, anybody? Hold up, you know. You gotta be like, yo, when was the last time you was tested? Uh, yeah, it's like the NBA. You yeah. wanna be in a bubble? Yeah. All right, first date six feet, and then if I like you, second date we'll go three feet apart. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and then third, I don't. Yeah, like a girl, like I don't sleep on the first date. Like I don't get within three feet on the first day. I just want yeah. you to know that it's, it's a new thing. It's a new it's like, thing. Yeah. yeah. I do not get within six feet on the yeah. first date, and if I swear to God, yeah, you have to have a mask. I prefer a shield. <laughs> yeah, I'll French kiss with a mask on, but that's about it. That's about it. Yeah, <laughs> it's like over the titty, like over the shirt. That's the way it is now. It's like yeah. the first couple of kisses is mask to mask. It's like yeah. your hand over the shirt. Like you'll get under the shirt eventually. Yeah, instead of banak, it's Lysol to the face. You should do <laughs> banak. Be like, <laughs> kills Rona. <laughs> Run free right now for ten seconds. Kiss me, baby. Kiss me, baby. Isn't this romantic? <laughs> a lot, a lot of, a lot of people are single, and I saw someone post a, a no food, like, like almost like a curmudgeon broad was like shocker. En- en- enough of you, you know, all these relationship things. Some people are single and lonely on this day. You wish you would think about them on this day, and it's like no. Yeah, well, same with Christmas when you when you're fucking decking the halls with boughs of holly with your fucking matching pajamas and shit. Wow, burning her with a fucking Christmas lyric. I'm just nice. saying. <laughs> Listen, you cunt. When you're jingle belling down the hallway, <laughs> give me that jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell rock, okay? You don't think I know Santa Claus is coming yeah. down? Fuck you. Don't you think I know the Jingle Bell time and the Jingle Bell rhyme? I get it. I get it. <laughs> no, but they... I don't know. The people all have something to say about everything. They suck. People suck. <laughs> Fuck people, man. They suck. What has to happen is the internet, all social media, has to go away because you people suck so bad, bro. They suck so bad. Well, then how am I going to find out what my future holds for me if I don't have one of those little games that I click Let's Play on? <laughs> Has any of it panned out yet? <sighs> the future is yet to be written, Michael. I got to say, there's still a shot that I can find love and be a lawyer. <laughs> I and I look like fucking Ralph Macchio. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> How come I got to do celebrity lookalikes like nine times before you get something close? Robin said, uh, I like that. I'm like that, too. I've come to the conclusion that I will die with chinchillas eating my flesh. <laughs> wow. That's, that <laughs> That's is heavy. Out there. 
that, that fucking you you're beyond uh you. you're beyond laundromat lonely <laughs> chinchillas some, see yeah, you gotta put some serious thought into to get to chinchillas eating yeah you. Well, hey robin let me ask you when your chinchillas are hanging on you do they know what you're fantasizing about <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at my little cutesies. you going to eat me when I die? So she must have chinchillas at home. I would hope so. That's a pretty s- specific That's point. Yeah, yeah. animal to pull out. Listen to this. This happened. It just killed me the other day. So my um, – remember last week we did the story about my daughter's boyfriend, mm-hmm. his family. So Channel 12 went back to their house a couple of days ago and interviewed him. Because all, because some of the neighbors put their Christmas trees and lights back out, so they went and interviewed him, and he said, "Don't put the cameras on; he's not comfortable." And they put the cameras on the bright lights, and he looked like a a guy that doesn't want to be in front of cameras and lights. He was so uncomfortable, swallowing his tongue. Um, but uh, so I said to him, "Man, you look totally." He's like, "Yeah, they, they, I told him don't put the lights on. I, I didn't want to be on a camera, and they put the lights on." And this is what he said. I felt like I felt like Betty White on the red carpet. And I have no idea. What? Fuck exactly. I he was saying that through like my daughter was on the phone with me and he was in the background talking and he said that and I said, Stop talking. What the fuck did he just say? He felt like Betty White on the red carpet. I'm like, I don't even I don't even know. I don't I can't even venture to Know what that even means? So he, I, I was like, first off, were you talking about being uncomfortable on the red carpet and all the cameras are in front of you? If that's true, why would Betty White be your go-to on the There's red so carpet? So many other red carpet. There's so many, like nowadays, red carpet people. I said, <laughs> I feel like Betty White on the red. <laughs> so when he came in, I was just blown away by that. It made me laugh for like a half hour. Just him that that's his go-to. Yeah. Betty White on the red carpet. So when he came in, he's like, no, I just, this is where his brightness comes in. Um, He's like, no, I just mean like, you know, she's, she's so white and like, she's on the red carpet and like the lights make her look even whiter. How old is this guy? How old is this guy? 32. Who watches the red car? I got (laughs) any, but he's talking about that. She's so bright white that they'll make the white made her look even brighter and like pale and that's what he felt like but that was a lot of mental like i don't know how you get to that analogy like how does that immediately i mean he went immediately to i look i felt like betty white on the red carpet like that and how often are you looking at betty white on the red carpet going wow she looks really white yeah you're trying to get me into a mind of a maniac i don't know i can't <laughs> i can't <laughs> I don't. I can't. I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know what to do with that. I know. It's just. It's. I would. That's like something that if I. I'd be like. If I was around a person like that, I'd be like, okay, I'll see you, and just like walk off. <laughs> like if that. Like even if we were all hanging out, like this is the new friend we're all meeting. Hey, yeah, buddy, yeah. Why? I'd be like, okay, I'll see you guys later. Again. Well, we didn't even get order <laughs> yet. I, had a, I dealt in because I wanted to know where how you even came up with that. Yeah, you should have asked them. I did. I just told you. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I mean, like, delve in, like, is. Well, in the middle of it, I thought he meant that he felt uncomfortable with all the bright lights on him. Like, he felt like a celebrity on the red carpet, and his celebrity was Betty White. So that's what I thought he meant. Yeah. Because it was so bright, the lights on him, that he felt like a celebrity being on the red carpet, and he went with Betty White. That's not what he meant. Who would be on your red carpet if you were thinking that way, like a maniac? No, you don't understand what I'm saying, though. Like, he felt like the camera lights from the TV cameras came on him yeah. in the middle of his fucking house at night. Yeah, no, I, like, yeah. And he felt like he was on a red carpet. Right. But he, he his celebrity his was His go-to Betty was White. Betty White, which is weird. Yeah. That's. I would be like Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. <laughs> really, right up there. Top, top Fuck shelf. It, I think top. this guy's a little more sane than you. I think he sees himself more as Betty White. I think that you <laughs> have... <laughs> Can't pick like a Steve Buscemi or something like a. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Why he's a great actor? We're talking about his acting skills right there on the red carpet. Yeah, but he's so such a good actor so, it makes him better looking. So Brad Pitt's a great actor. What? 
Brad Pitt's a great actor. I just want to win. If we're going with great actors. Okay, skills, yeah, okay. Okay, you're uh, Brad yeah. Pitt. I, I, I stand corrected. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah, you do have the <laughs> acting chops of Brad Pitt. Which, yeah, and the jawline. And the jawline. Anyway. <laughs> Robin said, Joe, are you tired or practicing your come and get me look? What is the come and get me look? When your eyes are all bedroom eyes. I'm <laughs> I don't know. I don't look at you like that. So. I, I don't know. I don't know, Rob. So, but anyway, he came. they came to the house last night. I asked them. I, I brought it back up. I said, I'm trying to figure out how to do this on stage because it blew my mind what you said. Then he explained because Betty White's so pale. Yeah. And she's on the red carpet and the bright lights make her look even whiter. And that's how he felt. However, even deeper, how would that be? How many times have you seen Betty White on the red carpet and thought, fuck, man, she looks pale. Betty ultra white. Man, look how- <laughs> Now I'm all self-conscious about what my eyes are doing, Rob, and I got to like hold them up. <laughs> I'm going to be giving bedroom eyes. <laughs> Come and get me. As a, my grandma said that uncomfortably one time when I, I had like senior portraits, you know, right. like in high school. And she's like, oh, look at Joey there in his bedroom eyes. <laughs> it's like, grandma, that's fucking weird. Start <laughs> opening them really wide. <laughs> yeah, you're just like, hey, grandma, how's it going? <laughs> Don't ever say that again, grandma. Oh, my God. So, uh, yeah, Valentine's Day for us is nothing anymore. I mean, when you're with somebody so long, Valentine's Day shit. I wanted to, if I said, uh, I don't know, I took a picture of a guy. In, All uh, right. A picture of a guy? Whoa, whoa breaking news on the owner of podcast. I'm Mike took a picture of a guy. I'm Are you sending it to me? Uh, yeah, I want to send it to you. You want me to put it up on the screen? Yeah. So email it to you or Facebook? I mean, email Uh, it? Uh, yeah, email it to me. Robin said, haha, you're fine. I'm thinking you're practicing a roll. Like a roll, like a buttered roll? (laughs) You know, being the fat's all I am, that's all I thought of (laughs) is buttered roll. (laughs) 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 If you... (laughs) If, if like they're like Joe, you're on a roll. I'd be like buttered roll. <laughs> All right, let me look for this picture you're sending me. So the, the picture is, um, is with like a guy with like a, it's at Walgreens, and he's with his two kids. Uh huh. And it was like three hours ago, so like you know Valentine's Day is pretty much if you haven't figured it out yet, bro, you're married with a wife and two kids. You know what I'm saying? And he's at Walgreens and he's got sends this huge balloon. Look what he's picked look he bought. This huge balloon. I'm like, can you get is it the the later you are in Valentine's Day, the bigger the balloon's gotta be to compensate for the fact that you lack love and fucking <laughs> you know, love. You lack love and and you know Let me see if um, I can get it on the screen here. Uh Look at the size of that balloon. What's wrong with that? It's nice. It's huge. And it's four o'clock in the afternoon, guy. Come on, man. You made no effort. That's what that is. I find sorry. Yeah, but that's a dude thing. I went to Wegmans to get strawberries and cheesecake about a half hour before she got home from work. And there was just people grabbing flowers like mad there. Oh, I know. You look, there's a whole line of people with balloons and stuffed animals. Well, if you're going to be last minute and she knows it, you might as well go big balloon. That's my point. My oh, okay. point is he went with a big balloon because he's so late. He's married with two kids, had all day, and then he comes home at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I guess he had to go a bigger balloon. Like, babe, I know. Look at but that little at kid. He's like, I ain't got me no balloon. He's fucking all pissed. <laughs> he's like all sad he's with been, his little mask on. Been, Look at that. <laughs> he's been pulling balloons down the whole walk, so he's fine. He's just yanking balloons the whole walk down that aisle. Yeah. So he's good. Well... But I just like I look creepo the Mike is taking pictures of them. He's like, Dad, we're under surveillance. I think that just is a huge balloon for a Walgreens day of. Like, if you got that balloon and it was part of 
like a, a thing that you centered. It's a big balloon. It's like great, but you went like, oh fuck. Actually, let me just. If you look at the photo again, and zoom in, the the cash register guy knows you're fucking snooping. No, I thought that too, but he looked down every time like that to see how many people were in line and uh-huh. how no one was coming to help him ring up. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's thought... kind of his look. His look just... is, I can't believe how many people are in line and no one's coming to help me. Yeah. Oh, okay. Huh? Not, not this fucking guy taking pictures. No. <laughs> um, I just thought it was funny. I saw... Some some broad on on my Instagram posted like a picture like you know of this girl big beautiful apartment it's like a fucking photo it's a definitely like a like a fucking photo shoot so girl in her apartment on her like on sit like kneeling on her couch beautiful beautiful like you could tell it's like a high rise apartment gorgeous windows on every wall. And there was 10 dozen roses and 40 balloons all over the place. Just Jesus. And she's like on her couch, like holding like a flowers and like all the stuff around her. And I was like, I was like, that dude is definitely making up for something he did wrong. There's no reason for all that. And she goes back. What do you mean? And I'm like, ew. You think that that's what's needed? If that first off, you're that's what you need. Like that's what your desire is. I want to be cheap. You want that? What the fuck does that do for you? Yeah, she sounds 40? like a handful. Ugh, that she, makes me. That turned me off. Smack that guy. I'd be like, dude, what are you doing? I don't know, man. Look, everyone sh- expresses their love. I just thought it was like I looked at the picture. I was like, wow, it's a little overdoing it for one holiday you know 12 dozen roses scattered out through a whole apartment in 40 balloons and stuffed animals get the fuck out of here yeah that's easy it's got to be simple man i got she got me like ferrero rochers and uh some scratch <laughs> <laughs> uh, i don't know how to say it i know you, you tripped up do you list. know how to say it no, I don't even try. It's just one of those gold ball candies. <laughs> gold ball candies. <laughs> for for, 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 for. <laughs> it's like you just gave it to a retarded kid. <laughs> for, Ferrero, Ferrero Roche, Roche, Ferrero Roche. Are you reading it? No, I'm just trying to. Oh, I should read it. Yeah, you're staring at me for. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to go from memory. Ferrero Rocher. That's two different words, right? <clears throat> two different words, yeah. But it's like a multi-flavored pack. I haven't even dipped into that. That's going to be my breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. I mean, the, I mean, the the fasting's got to be crushing it. <laughs> no, I, I get one cheat day. I do, I... So. <laughs> So today doesn't count. No, because I I I ate my cheesecake. For- <laughs> <laughs> You're cracking under pressure. No, no, wait, no. No, wait. because I didn't have dinner. I had cheesecake for dinner, and, uh, <laughs> oh and then I started fasting early. <laughs> well, I gotta think that that is not how it works. Man. It does though, because the sliced cheesecake is only four hundred and twenty calories. If I would have had, like, a fucking dinner, it would have been at least 500 calories. So it's like calories in, calories out. Bing, bang, boom. And I walked today. <laughs> so Joe Fernandez's diet. He's calories in, calories out. Bing, bang, boom. And then you walk, and then you're done. You're good. Cheesecake, bing, bang, boom. You're out. You're done. Yeah. Did you have any other food? What time did you start eating today? I started eating at uh, 1230 today. I stopped eating you know, yesterday at seven thirty at night. So twelve thirty to what six? Huh? Yeah. You only ate for six hours. Well, I had my I had like my breakfast at twelve thirty. Right. So you should go to at least eight thirty. I could. I, yeah, I can eat again, but like I I go on how I'm feeling. If I don't need to eat, I don't just eat because it's eight thirty. <laughs> no, I know, but 
I like to stretch it all the way to the end. Well, if, well, I feel like I had cheesecake at six, so I should really just kind of wrap it up. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, that does make sense, but... And... God, there's an end. No, I'm th- I, th- I think it works out, because it's just, it is what it is. It's not the best, but it's better than, like, me doing everything. You know what, what I mean? You, you got a trade-off. So I didn't have so, a lot of food today. So, so you, having a cheesecake for breakfast, for breakfast I, I had I had a, a little bowl of uh, raisin bran, okay, and a nice. uh, and a little egg sa- a little egg sandwich. I love that <laughs> you say little, so we could no one could well, assume two egg, that two, egg, two egg sandwich. But no one could assume you ate a big ass egg sandwich and a bowl of cereal. It's a little bowl, a little bowl of cereal and a little tiny egg sandwich. <laughs> so, all, right. all right. Then at three thirty, yeah, which I had a little what? I had a little sandwich <laughs> with turkey <laughs> and uh, fresh mozzarella cheese. Got it. And then at six o'clock, I had straw- chocolate covered strawberries and cheesecake for dinner. <laughs> oh, oh, wait! Before that, I grabbed one small chicken cutlet out of the fridge. But that- <laughs> a small one. <laughs> it was like a nugget size. It was very small. But other than that, nothing. No, oh, good. you're practically starving yourself. <laughs> Is he working for me? He's <laughs> been working for me. Well, that's good. How long have you been doing this? Two weeks. I've lost uh, two pounds. I'm losing nice. like a pound a week. I, uh, see, I, we, can I all, we can all do the math, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't like this big <laughs> fucking... You know, we didn't need a big fucking calculator to go two weeks, two pounds, a pound a week. <laughs> I'm gonna die. No, I uh, cause I tried fasting last year. <clears throat> it was going good for a while, fasting. but it was tough. Like I have to trick my mind, so like I do sixteen and eight. So right. I fast for sixteen, but when I was having like my timer go off for sixteen, I was waiting for sixteen. Man, like come on. Right. So I right. went to the bottom of the scale. I set it for thirteen. So I know at 13, I'm technically did good enough, but then I'm being able to push right. myself to 16. I can push myself rather than wait. So mentally. I was doing 15, nine. That's yeah. what I was doing. 15, nine. Mm-hmm. The 16 wasn't, I need it. Like, cause I'm up late. I'm up till like two o'clock in the morning. I can't be done eating at eight o'clock at night and be up for six more hours. Mm-hmm. I can't do it. Oh, cause your schedule. Yeah. So I try to push it. One o'clock in the afternoon start, and then ten o'clock at night finish. So nine hours of eating. Yeah, you know, I usually stop at seven thirty or eight o'clock. Um, and <clears throat> what I find is, because you know, it's like the sweets. It's like that's what I crave at night. Something right. So I was like, all right, right before my fasting window starts, I'll get like a little mini like chocolate bar, like a little mini Milky Way, just to throw yeah, yeah. something and just be like, all right, I got a little treat. And then we ride right before you go right before you kick into your right 16th. before I kick in. I give myself a little sugar treat. Right. It's like, boom, because if I don't, I'm like obsessive. Then I'm like, I just better go to bed because it's either that or I'm right. That every I think that's the thing. If you can fight for a few months that, oh, my God, I'm about to re- I'm about to go on this 16 hour journey. If you can get <clears> over <throat> that hump. I think eventually it doesn't become a thing that you're thinking about. No, because honestly, it's like. Waiting till twelve thirty to eat, or sometimes if I stop at seven thirty, what I gotta wait till eleven thirty? Right. It's not that hard. Right. I get up, I have my black coffee. By the time I walk my dog, Bing Bang Boom. You know what I mean? Get everything right, done right. before you know you're there. Yeah, I, I, the sixteen is just. I never made it to the sixteen. Uh, the fifteen is all I can really do. Yeah. But and like I was I'm doing also, well. Yeah, you were doing well. I was doing well when we, we were all doing it. I was doing well, but then I kicked into this, you know, vegetarian slash vegan type of you know lifestyle. So you're always like, hungry. Yeah, it kind of fucked me up like that. So it's like just yeah. hard for me to. Grass isn't you know, as filling as meat. Mm-hmm. You got to eat a lot of fucking Grass. greens. Yeah. To be like full. You need. You know what it is. You need a lot of beans and shit. You need that protein. Protein I do makes that you too. full. I do that. 
But then you're going to fart, your, your, your fart like a motherfucker, right? Remember, I'm alone at the laundromat. No one cares. You know what I mean? Yeah, but don't you care after a while if you're just like ripping and roaring? By myself in my room? Like no. going around town? just. I don't rip and roar like that. I'm not an asshole. I hold it in. I just fart out in public. What the fuck is wrong with you? No, I don't mean like on people. I mean just... I didn't say it on people or near people or in, <laughs> around people. Like if if I'm at Target or something, I'm four aisles away from a human. I'll fucking let it go real, and I'll get out of that aisle. Yeah. You know, but I'm not just walking around, cracking ass up and down Shoprite, you know, as I'm shopping. Come on. All right. Well, like I tried one day. Like I I tried to do a hundred percent. What this guy I read his book. What he what he uh, suggests for a daily meal, like how to eat. For the day, mm-hmm. so I'm like eating like um, special cereal in the morning. It's really good, and then um, you have vegetables all day long. And then when I'm eating my dinner, like or a lunch, you got to be like like a ton of salad, a ton of fucking like broccoli and beans, and like and I'm eating all of this food just to equate to what he said. Like you need a cup and a half of this, two cups of that, like just to do that. And it was just too much food that I didn't want that much carrots and corn and, you know, broccoli and asparagus. I don't want all of that. I was going to be shoving carrots in my mouth. I just didn't want to eat like that. I just wanted something more filling without having to do all of that. Garbanzo beans, bro. That's what you gotta yeah, do. I Got to fry them with sriracha. I don't like and sriracha, some, so I wouldn't. Or, do or something. Just put them in a frying pan and like spices right. and shit, olive oil, boom. Or do you ever get the dried ones? No. The dried chickpeas. They're like fucking little nuts and shit. Fucking no. make them buffalo and other good. Is this the, you have to do this when you have nuts? <laughs> Just, <laughs> yeah. Fucking got black guy from hey, hey, okay. <laughs> White guys don't do that. Black guys do that. Yeah, and they suck in nuts. I shuck nuts. Sounds gay, but <laughs> but I like it. But I like it. Um, I you know what I made last night? I made it, second, third time I made it. Uh, my own um hummus. Ah, oh, yeah, nice. Fucking so good. It's so man. much better when you make it at home, right? Ah, uh, yeah. Got food so processor and shit. I made it. Yeah, so I made it, the first time I made it. It was good. The second time. I made it. It was just, it didn't taste the same. And I was like, ah, that sucked. And then last night I made it and it was phenomenal. So good. It's simple too, man. It's just a can of chickpeas. I don't do, I do can of chickpeas, you know, you know, drain them and then rinse them off. Um, it says one clove of garlic. I go two cloves of garlic because I like garlic. You know what I mean? Chuck yeah. that in. Olive oil and uh, lemon. Some really, really good tahini sauce, you know, the mm-hmm. tahini. Boom. Oh, my God. And then I put a little, at the end, I put a little paprika, drizzle some garlic oil, throw some parsley on top. Wow. Yeah. It's really good. Really good, man. Mikey Mamoons. <laughs> <laughs> Mikey Mamoons. Sounds like a fucking, like a call me a name. It's <laughs> fucking Mamoon. Look at this fucking Mamoon. So it'd be your Italian uh, hummus stand. Your jer- <laughs> hey, Mikey Mamoon Schwamas. Get over here. I got a get over here. You got hummus. Boat. I got that eggplant shit. What they call baba ganoush. I got I don't a. Like that. You don't like baba ganoush? No, it's all right. I like eggplant, but I don't like baba ganoush. Yeah, I don't like a lot of that stuff. I mean, falafels. I got into it finally, but not, that's about as far as I go. Hey, that's something you can make at home. Fucking falafels. I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm, yeah, I am gonna do that. You gotta get yourself an air fryer. I got one. Yeah, yeah, it's good. This has become a very. I hear a lot about it. This has become a very Bed Bath and Beyond episode of All in Our Heads <laughs> podcast. <laughs> the lonely guy fucking needing making hummus for himself. Yeah. Um, yeah. What are you gonna do, man? It's life is life. Life is life, man. There's a lot of that's why I know there's a lot of lonely people out there. But I was like, I want to be like, do you guys see each other's posts? You, there's guys can like hang so many that, there's, there's so so many people saying that it's like i don't know 
I'm just. What do you think like, holds I'll, people back? Like, do you think? I think. I, can't talk yeah, I think. Like, not for me. I think. <clears throat> like as we get older, like the we don't play into the fantasy of like it's almost like when you see a show and you already see what's happened. Like you like I know like you watch like an episode like Law and Order. You're like yeah, I know how this is gonna turn out. Like you've been there, done that. So you're yeah, just yeah. like, all right, same formula. I, see, yeah, I don't have that. I don't. I just. Uh, I don't know, man. First off, I'm out of shape. I'm not. I don't feel good about myself. So that'll do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? When I feel fat and ugly, I'm not like, hey, what's happening, girl? Just not how I am. Now, I if I was working, if I was doing something to not be fat and ugly and still was fat and ugly, I would feel better. That's just who I am. <clears throat> like just because I'm not my I, my body isn't what makes me feel good or bad about myself. It's my effort of what I'm putting into my body. Right. That makes me feel bad about who I am. So it doesn't make me feel sexy when I'm doing nothing. Right. You know what I mean? I'm just trying to eat a little better, but then I fuck that up. I'm going to have cookies as soon as I'm done with this. So like, you know what I'm saying? Like, as soon as we're done with this, I'm going to have cookies. Yeah. That's what's happening tonight. You know what I mean? Um, and then I'm like, every day, I'm like, I got to stop so I could just, I got to lose, I got to start losing weight and exercising a little bit so I feel good about me. Because when I feel good about me, then I'm interested in talking to somebody. You know what I mean? That's but understandable. Because I, because I don't really feel good about me. It's like, yeah. And then I lay in bed at night going, I would like to talk to somebody. And it's like, well, get up tomorrow and do something. It's like, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And then I don't. <clears throat> so, um. Well, here's a compliment for you. Mike, you're crazy. You look good with flames. Thank you, Robin. I appreciate that. Um, I might, again, I can look the same exact way, but making a little effort and feel a thousand times better. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it doesn't really, like I might say I'm fat and ugly, uh -huh. but it's because I'm not doing anything. Hold on, I gotta let the dog in. I hear him, I hear him. <laughs> we haven't had a visit from uh, Cody in a while, so. Did you keep the podcast going while I was gone? I said, we. you weren't gone <laughs> for 13 milliseconds, two seconds. <laughs> Yeah, we talked about. Let me tell you, we talked. We talked about Sicily. I don't know. We talked. We really went into depth about. Sicily. All right. So no, we talked about the fact that we haven't heard from Cody in a while. So welcome. Yeah. We haven't really heard from him in a while. No, nah, not in a while. He's done. He's over it. <laughs> He's over it. He's like you fucking guys. Yeah, I know what you're doing in here. I'm going. Um, so you don't like yourself. So when I'm not. Liking myself, you know, I'm not going to be. Yeah, no one's going to be. Home. Yeah, yeah, that's not the time to go out. Like, hey, babe, I don't like myself. How do you? <laughs> How do you like me? Um, <laughs> now, it does, but it doesn't take much. I remember when me and Frank would talk, and Frank would. One thing about Frank, he would always let me know that I'm not that far away from feeling great. Right. I could be down in the dumps, like, ah, oh, and he'd be like, you know what, man? But you know you. All it takes is a little bit of effort, and you feel like a million bucks. Yeah, man. You know what I mean? It's all it takes. It's one little decision to be different, and I feel like a million bucks. But I, I, I'm not. I'm never one to like. I mean, never one to been like, "What was me?" You know, "What was me?" It's look at my life. It's like I'm never like that. I know ninety nine point nine percent of the things that are in my life are on my fucking at my hands. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I'm struggling financially right now. I did some stupid things with a job. That's all in my hands. And like, like it's no more like, like this is where I'm getting at with, with, with the relationship thing. There's no more, uh, you know, um, it's okay. You make mistakes. No, 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 no. You knew the outcome and you did it anyhow. Right. So you don't get to say, hey, I made a mistake. Nah. No, you didn't make a mistake. You fucked up willingly. Own it. Own it that you sometimes fuck up willingly. Own it. Not a mistake. It's not an oopsie doozy. No. You willingly ran into the fucking wall head her first. You knew it. You knew it. It's not like you were... Maybe it's always, and you know it and say it running full speed at the wall. Like, yep, this kind of really hurt. So I can't, I don't want to make those mistakes anymore. That's why, like, I don't want to make excuses. That's why, like, why are you single? Like, what well, excuses? 
I'm single because I don't feel good about myself and I fucking, that's it. I don't do anything to feel better about myself. There's no circumstances, money, financial, blah, 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 blah. none of that. You don't feel yeah. good about yourself and you make no effort to feel good about yourself. So fucking be alone. Yeah. You know what I mean? What's that old Chris Rock joke? Either married and bored or single and lonely. There ain't no happiness nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Is that on a, isn't that a Hanukkah card? Um, he has, he has <laughs> Hanukkah card. <laughs> <laughs> the fortune it, cookie. It's true, though. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. So there's actually, no single lonely. lonely is the best lonely, though. It is because there's hope. Listen, for the majority of my life, I'm pretty happy who I am. Yeah. But there's times when, at my own hands. I find myself in a hole. And it isn't the world that did it to me. It's me. And when I'm in that hole, I always own it. Yay. Good for you, Mike Gaffney. Well, you always own it. Fuck you. That's how I felt. This is where I'm at right now. Like, well, fuck yeah, you. Yeah. And you're owning it. Do it different, you dumb, fat fuck. That's how I feel about myself right now. It's like, yeah, oh, you did, you, you're owning it. Oh, you got honest. That's so good. Good, good, good boy. Fuck off. Well, it's because of the age. Like, huh? I, it's because you like our age. Like I, you know, like when I deal with stuff in therapy, that mm -hmm. it's like, it's like we're too like we know like we're too old to be like <sighs> like we know yeah. what we did. Exactly. It's not like we're in our twenties. We're like, oh, you know, I'm just you know figuring my life out and making mistakes. Yeah, you gotta just. But like yeah, you're, yeah. you're tired in your forties, you know. <clears throat> oh my god, yeah. I'm tired of me doing me. That you can stop right there. I'm tired of me. Yeah. I'm tired of me and my pathetic fucking excuses of why I'm floundering around. Now, on the other hand, we've talked about like my gambling and stuff like that. On the other hand, I do enjoy. I told my therapist this a while ago. I enjoy. The degenerate side of myself. Of course. That's why we go back to it. So there's some de degenerate shit I kind of like about me. I am going to be the guy who's like stresses week to week, month to month. But when I stress week to week, month to month, and I'm doing the right thing, it always works out. Right. When I'm stressing week to week, month to month, and I'm fucking up in the middle of it, it if it works out, it's fucking a miracle. Yeah. And by fucking up, yeah, I don't want people to think I don't drink or get high or not like that. It's just fucking up my own things, my own little things. Not eating right, not exercising, not meditating. You know what I mean? <clears throat> gambling when I shouldn't be gambling. Um, spending money on something I shouldn't have bought. Yeah, those little things that, that, you know, that it's little things. Yeah. You know, me, this job that I hate it so much, not leaving it correctly mm -hmm. makes me feel like shit about myself. Yeah. It just does. And as things don't pan out, I have the tendency to say, well, you deserve all the bad. Mm. You beat yourself you didn't do up. It the right yeah. Way. yeah. You know what I mean? And that's the part that I don't want to feel that I deserve shit because I fucked up. Right. So I try to avoid fucking up so I don't feel that guilt because I always feel that guilt and I don't want to live for weeks on end feeling like whatever bad happens to me I deserve mm. and that's where I'm at like it's hard for me to elevate to a level where I'm like oh, I'm good everything's good just live right do the right thing I'm still on the you gotta pay for the, your mistakes buddy you're gonna be paying for your mistakes for a while no wonder you're spending Valentine's Day in the laundromat. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> it's your punishment. <laughs> yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. So, um, that's the happy, happy uh, message I have for everybody listening. Well, that's what we we try and bring bring. Uh, actually, we have a question in the chat. Let's see. It says sure. a serious question. All comedians I follow can really change my mood. 
Doesn't the ability to make people laugh give you any joy? It has to feel good to light a room on fire, no? Yeah. Did you? Yeah. I thought she answered it for us. No. <laughs> total, total East Coast. Yeah, right? No. Um, <laughs> and Denise um, says, uh, Denise Struble says, you're an awesome guy, Mike. Oh, thank you so much. I. It's a personal journey. You know, life is a personal thing. And like It is? You know, so you can do right sometimes. I mean, for the most part, I'm a, I'm a good person. I'm a loving, caring person. When I fuck up, it makes all those good qualities feel like I, I don't own them. Yeah. Even though I do own them. You know what I mean? I'm a good person. I'm caring. I'm smart. I try to help people. I'm, uh, you know, I, I try to live my dreams. I try to fucking, you know. All your bad just, qualities you do to yourself. You don't do it. You don't hurt outside people. No, not usually, no. You know. But it, it hurts me, and then I think that all the good things I have going on in my life, that I don't have them. Yes, making people laugh is, I don't look at it like that, like, you know, I make people laugh, so life, you know, I'm awesome. But um, knowing that people enjoy listening to us be goofy and watching me on stage, making them laugh, knowing that that happens makes me feel good. Oh yeah. You know, when people like, um, email me and be like, you know, Hey, I just, I'm so grateful. You're still, you guys are doing your podcast. It makes me laugh so much. It just brightens up my day. That's nice. That's nice to hear. And like some people are going through shit and they hear us and they laugh. Of yeah. course, that a thousand percent is awesome. Totally. Yeah, but mo like what most comics listening to like a podcast lately, I've noticed the one thing it's I, I wanted to bring this up this is separate from how I'm feeling about me. So we'll move on from that for a second. That's fine. Move on from you. So I've been listening to a lot of podcasts, driving around and listening to uh comedians and uh it's amazing how comedians and actors all actors too, like John Cusack, um Matthew McConaughey feel that eventually people are going to realize they're a fraud. Yeah. And it's like, my God, that is what every single time I walk into a comedy club, I think, well, they're going to, they're going to realize I'm a fraud. Yeah. I don't I get believe, it. I don't deserve to be here. I mean, we're talking guys like they get a role and they're like, wow, I can't believe I got this role. They're going to realize I'm a fraud. Gaffigan said it. Seinfeld. They all say that you think that the how. Oh, who was it? I think I think I think actors and comedians are like that because of the amount of failure it takes to get proficient at your craft. Actors yeah. with auditions like the amount of failure. Right. To to, to to get to the point where you just get given movies or given auditions. Like just right, failure, right. failure, fa stand up, failure, failure, failure. So I think, like, like, I, I mean, speaking from a comedian, like, you always have like those one or two like ultra bombs that like stick with you, and you're just like, right. I I think it, it's good in a way. It keeps you a little humble, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, because it's like, well, I, I'm trying to remember who I was listening to. It was either Judd Apatow, or somebody, and they were just talking about how was it Judd. I can't remember. It's like, I thought it was a comedian, but it might have been Judd. How you're 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 afraid they're gonna see it in this thin, thin, delicate house of cards is gonna come crumbling down. You know what I mean? That's how he described it. Like this thin, delicate house of cards that you built up, and everyone's gonna realize, oh, you don't deserve to be here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like uh, Dax Shepard says. Uh, Um, Dax Shepard said like he, he got voted like he was at the Golden Globes or something like that or he just he said he was talking to someone I forget who I was listening to and he's like he's like I'm always thinking someone's gonna, they're gonna ring my bell Holly was gonna ring my bell and be like wow it was a huge clerical error <laughs> you don't you don't belong here at all like <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean like you just feel like it's gonna come crashing down and everyone's gonna realize that you have no talent yeah, every, yeah, they all feel you know, like that. But it, that was that makes me feel really good when I'm listening to 
guys who have been, that I admire who are doing the thing and they still feel like I feel like, oh, that's the connection that we have. That we all feel like we're going to be exposed for not being good. Guys who are amazing feel that they're going to be exposed at, for not being good at their job. Yeah, because we we all work in fields where it's like it, like it's like you're there's no security, right? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Even when you're a big actor, right, right. You know what I mean? It's like you always got to do the net. You're as good as your next but show. You're as good. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But what their point? What I'm saying is, is they don't feel like they deserve it to begin with. Oh yeah, imposter syndrome. Yeah, that's the thing. Imposters. Yeah. They feel like they're all imposters. Yeah, because you can't believe that you're doing it. Right. Like, I, you ever have, like, I've had it a few times, especially if, like, whenever I got a chance to, like, open up for someone at, like, a big theater or something right. where it's, like, sold out and you're out there and you're killing it. And it's like, you they're not your fans, but you're doing it. Like, I yeah, mean, yeah. I'm a, I used to be at a bar with, like, five drunks telling me to shut the fuck up. Right. And then, you know, like, and and like, I remember like having these like almost out of body experiences. Like, I can't believe I'm right. doing this. Right. Like, right. I'm almost I'm telling my jokes and I'm looking at the architecture of the theater. Right. Right. And I'm like in awe. And you're just like, I want to keep doing this. I don't want this right, to go I away. I don't want to go back to the bar. I want to do this. Especially guys like <laughs> us. If you're opening for someone in that in that kind of a venue. Yeah. That you know tomorrow you're not back at that venue. No, it's real right back to humbling. You're you're back at a uh, Susie's rib joint with a with a plastic right back. backdrop that says like ha ha hole. <laughs> ha ha hole. What a horrible name. For hey, a I, think, I bet there's there's got to be Definitely one out there. Ha-ha-hole. There's got to be one hot. Ha- I've played comedy caves, coves. Yeah. Oh, I hear you. I've yeah yeah. I Shop, all shoppies, there. comedy shoppies. To, to Canada to play a comedy cave, so I get it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, but, but like, a, but like, you almost feel like a, like, like an imposter there, even like sitting side stage about to go off on this theater. You're just like, what the fuck? Yeah, no, yeah. Like, especially, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like I always feel like if I get brought in, like if I'm headlining somewhere I'm on the road, and I'm and I come into a club. And everyone treats you like, you know, like, especially like the staff in the club owners. Like, hey, well, thank you so much for coming. Here's the green room. They start talking to you like you're uh, like a thing, right? Yeah. This is, this is the green room. If you need anything, let us know. This is your area. The refrigerator's got full of stuff. And whatever you need, let me know. Joe's going to pick you up tomorrow. He's going to bring you to the radio. Like all this stuff, right? And you're like, I'm, you're going to see in less than an hour that I'm a fraud. Yeah. That's my fear that like I'm gonna be exposed at the end of this hour and be like, ah, oh, he's not a comedian. Who is this guy? Like they're treating me special, and I don't feel like I deserve it. Yeah. You know, every time I walk into a room for the first time, to a comedy club for the first time, I feel like I don't deserve this. And you guys are way overboard on me. I'm a schmuck. Yes, I make people laugh, but I, I'm not really that good. I'm not. I'm not that good. Yeah, it's probably it's it's. I think it's common because it's. I think if you broke it down, like psychologically, it is fucking weird. Like we're not people aren't supposed to like go in a room of a bunch of strangers and just fucking do that. Right. Just uh, I'm gonna go make them laugh. Like like a theater thing. It's like oh, there's somebody wrote a script. They guys rehearsed. It's like they're. It's like this dude rolling up and you know could be different every night. (laughs) Fucking right, 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 right. It's just it's a weird thing. Yeah. You know, but I think yeah, impo- I've heard imposter syndrome. It's usually I have with that. the with the bigger gigs, that's when I get it. Whenever I get the uh, bigger opportunities, I have it anytime I'm around, like in a in a room that's important to me. Yeah. Um, or like in a club where like the comics are like you know they're next level above you. You want to like be colleagues with them. You want to like prove yourself. Right. It I that's where I fucking mentally can't right right i just can't i get i that I, I takes a real i really got a pep talk myself when i'm around people that i admire right yeah yeah and yeah. i'm on the same show i'm like just fucking 
Don't sabotage yourself, motherfucker. <laughs> I almost have to tell myself I do belong here because if I if I go into imposter syndrome too much, I'm surely right. gonna bomb. I almost right, have absolutely. to like I almost have to secretly like be arrogant in my head. Just be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can do you you were meant for this. This is you know. <laughs> right, I have to right. go. I have to go like the opposite, not outwardly, but inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. I feel like that when I come into a club on the road and I look at who was there last week and who's going to be there next week. And you're like, Oh my God. Duh. You know what I'm saying? Like that's, these were the headliners you got coming in. It was, what am I doing here? Filling a fucking spot. You know what I mean? Yeah. Dude, I had a funny thought. Yeah. <laughs> I had a funny thought the other day. Like, I don't know. Like when we're like new comics, like when you're brand new and you're just going into comedy clubs and you'll see like all the headshots on the wall. You're like, who the fuck is that guy? Who the fuck? Like, all these guys you never right. heard of before. You're like, oh my god, I'm that guy now. <laughs> I'm the who the fuck is that guy guy on the wall. Hundred percent. A hundred percent. That's funny, man. You're right. <laughs> yeah, I'm the who, who the fuck is that guy? Yeah, you like look at all the headshots. You're like, oh, I like, oh, he's hilarious. Oh, hey, who the fuck are all these other people? Yeah, that's that's where I'm at. That's you're the fucking who the fuck. I'm the who the oh, fuck. Bobby, Bobby Kill. Oh, Brian Regan. Who the fuck is that guy? Yeah, they should make a wall for us. He's the who the fuck of that guy wall. Yeah. <laughs> you don't really have to look over here, wall. Yeah. These are our Wednesday, <laughs> Thursday headliners. Yeah, you're not going to call anybody them you know over here. Who the fuck of that guy? That's going to be the name of my next CD, Joe Fernandez. Who the fuck is who this the fuck guy? Who is this guy? <laughs> 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 That's a good. That's a good, that's a good title. title. That is Writing a good that title. Down. You should. Well, speaking of, before we wrap up, uh, talking about comedy, did you see the whole Ted Alexandro uh, joke stealing thing? Yeah, the uh, Zillow. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty, pretty bad. It's, it's pretty much the stolen. It's like yeah. Not even confusion. Yeah, for people that don't know, uh, Saturday Night Live last weekend did a thing about. A sketch about Zillow and how, like, when you're older, like, that's how, like, you foreplay almost. Like, you look at houses. That's your girl. sex thing. That's, that's your sex, sex thing. thing. Like, yo, look at yeah. this three bedroom, two and a half bath. Yeah. You know, Ooh, yeah. look at that big yard. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, but Ted Alexandro did a joke on his special cut up that was like that. And it's, I mean, through history, it's been over and over again where Saturday Night Live has writers i guess have gone into clubs and taken bits right. and made them into sketches yeah and i don't see how they couldn't have happened but it's weird the weird thing um is that like like michael che who's a stand up is like the head writer there yeah so he must not have known anything about that one or something it's like like i don't think time. i don't think it may be like per like some whoever came up with the idea probably still knows what they did Absolutely. But everyone else that went through, it's like you're not vetting every joke. Like, no, like put it this way, I don't know all my friends' jokes. And if, jokes. You, if you told me to like name your whole current act right now, I've seen you do it. Right, right. But if you said like just name the jokes, Mike does it. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, the writers. Listen, it's like when Amy Schumer, at uh, one time, um, you know, they remember she got accused of like taking like Kathleen Madigan's joke and making a sketch out of it. Yeah. And. Everybody shit on her. And I don't know what goes on in the writing room of any show. But the pressure on the writing room is come up with ideas. We need ideas, right? So these guys are fucking probably scouring the internet looking for fucking bits and yeah. making them sketches. And it's wrong. And they and they submit a thousand ideas. You think the head writers or the, the cast is going to be like, hey, where'd you get this joke? They don't give a fuck. No. They just... Submit it. We're trusting our writers to be legit and honest. That's all they can do. But it's fucked up. It's fucked up. Once it's exposed, then we need to you need to hold it accountable. Who wrote? Who submitted this fucking joke? But that also brought me to the whole concept of joke stealing, because you know when you get into comedy, you're like that's the cardinal sin: stealing jokes. Like right. there's parallel thinking, but you can tell when someone steals a joke because the shit's like too verbatim. Absolutely. To, you know, yeah, it could be a common topic, but you can totally tell. And you always hear that. This is this is sacrilege. Blah, blah, blah. But when it happens, 
Nobody, nobody does anything about it, and and it's, it's almost it. hurts you to even do something about it. I, I, like Joe Rogan, even though it all worked out for him, but like when it first happened with him and Carlsman C, like he lost his right. management, got kicked out of the comedy store. Right, right. We know fucking people that support joke thieves in Jersey. Absolutely. Like they're known joke thief, and it's like, oh, the guy books a room. I'm going to work for him. It's like, don't you have any integrity? Right. right. You know what I mean? I'm not like, it, I don't know, man. So it's like, I don't know. I feel like comics talk about it, but they don't live it. It's, but it's like that with the pay and the fucking in the shitty treatment at clubs. It's like, yeah, they suck over there. Where are you at this weekend? Over there. It's like, oh. yeah. So they do suck and they do pay shit, but we need to work. No, I when it comes to pay, so, that I, that's is, different because same, you got to do what same, you got to do to get on but stage. It's the same thing. People talk about. The, the bad parts of it, but we don't stick together. No. You know, and like, but I believe if you have a writer's room and it's exposed as a joke, find out who fucking submitted that. Yeah, you know whose first idea that was. Yeah, find out. And then that just guy. compensate Ted. Be like, here's some dough. Here's some yeah, money. Because it was actually a very week. popular sketch that week because right. it was fucking a funny bit. Absolutely. It's so relatable. Yep. You know what I mean? Now on it and like I, I I'm a fan of Ted's and I've watched this I didn't never watch that special, so I didn't even know that when I saw that Right, right. I saw it as a clip a while ago. Yeah. Let's see, Paul But well, then Bond. you don't put this two together. I yeah. I don't. Paul Bond said certain gigs represent real showbiz the way we want it to be every day, like the Borgata the MGM in Vegas, but we know it's only momentary. All right. Absolutely. Uh, Robin said, "Great show. Needed the laughs. The serotonin is running wild." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I just, I just found that to be an interesting story because uh, it's just, I don't know. It just makes me sick. The way yeah, people. Yeah, but so, to me, I, I, think I can understand. That- I know because I, I remember years ago I read uh, Jay Moore's book, Gasping for Airtime, when he came out and admitted that he stole a uh, Greer Barnes joke for a sketch. When he was on Saturday Night Live, like he willfully, he admitted he willfully did it because of the right, pressure right. of having to it. write. So I get it, I get it, but it's like definitely. I, I think, I, but like as a, like I don't know. I guess it's Who cares tough. About their integrity. We can't figure out somebody else's integrity. Yeah. If you feel like that's the way to be, then that's who you are. I'm not going to do that. Good no, but I'm you. telling you, nothing's gonna come of it. That's the problem. Like, and my point is, is with the with a writing room, you can hold someone accountable. Comedians stealing jokes and doing them on stage, we you, you're just a shitbag. I'm, you're probably gonna get. We're gonna know where you got it from, and we're probably not gonna respect you or put you on a show. Yeah. Right. I'm never gonna book a guy who I clearly know stole. Right. Never happening. Never. I remember talking to someone. I'm not gonna say who it was. And I was on the phone with him. He'd been doing comedy probably 10 years, 15 years longer than me, mm-hmm. 20 years, whatever. And he's like, um, I remember being on the phone call and he's like, yeah, man, I'm stealing, you know, but you know, we've all been at gigs where, you know, your, your shit's not working. So you just use somebody else's gig, you got other material, you know, just get you through. And I didn't respond. No words came out of my mouth. And he was like, you know, you know. You know, like, you know, we've been, like, you know, I might be doing a joke and, like, it's not working, so I'll use one of your jokes. No words out of my mouth. I didn't say a word. He kept trying to get me to say, I did not moan. I didn't go, mm-hmm, nothing. I was completely silent for his three minutes of trying to fucking rationalize stealing jokes. And at the end, when he was, like, done talking, I was like, I don't know. I don't do any of that. And that's where I left it, and we hung up. I don't, I don't, I never talked to that guy again. There's yeah. really no reason to talk to a guy who thinks it's okay to do someone else's jokes. Now, I've never done this, but if you were to say, and you wouldn't do this, but you're my best friend, so if you were to say, "Dude, I was at this fucking gig, and this joke of yours," you would never say this. You would never do this. But if you did do this and say, hey, I did that joke of your thing because it just worked out. I was talking to someone in the crowd and it just was funny. I wouldn't be like, 
I would be like, all right, dickhead. And I would be over it in a second. Right. And maybe back in the day when all these comics did shows together, they were all like a band of brothers. They would do it and fuck around on stage. And everyone knew what was happening. Maybe that was good back then. I didn't live that world. So I can't judge you if that's how you were. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's when you blatantly do it and stop and don't yeah. stop doing it. It's like you could slip sometimes and maybe add something and like be like, oh, ad. shit. Like, I, yeah. I think one time it was uh, I was talking about g- do, like being in like my gym jokes. Right. right. And I was talking about like being on a treadmill. And then I, I wound up saying, like, I can't even get the I'm too weak to even get the uh, the thing from the weights. I can't even pull the pin out. Right, I right, said that right. on stage, and afterwards, I go, oh, shit, that was a Gaffney line. Right, right, right. I mean, it's yeah. a line that anybody can come up with. It happens Absolutely. a lot. I didn't do your joke, right. but it was like, I'm never saying that again, only right, because I know you say it. Right. You know what I mean? And it's right, just a right. line. I didn't even make a joke, really, out of that line. Right. You know what I mean? It was just an observation. Right. But it, we all know the difference. We've seen it. It's, a it's a, and, and, and it typically... When a when you run into a joke thief, there's more than one person that's had jokes stolen by them. It's a prolific Correct. thing. Yes, that's when you hear about someone. That's what it is. It's like, oh, he stole from you too. Oh, he does mind this. He does mind that. Yeah, it's yeah, like, right. I would like to see, just in a, in a in a good world, just because uh, Ted's such a good comic and like a good dude, that like something happens with it, like positive. I don't, I don't right. want to say this. I, I'm hoping it's a good story where, like, a writer, like, w- I don't know. Like, maybe it didn't. Maybe it was parallel. Th- I don't know. Like, something. I don't want to see people get fucked up with it. You yeah, just no, want to but- see someone get compensated because it's, like, such. It's it's just their. It's his joke. I'm sorry. In a writer's room with 10 writers, you could say, you know who submitted that joke. Right. You know and that I mean? guy, that guy's got it, cause you got it. Like, think of, it was almost like I remember, like when I was in college, and like I, I went, I bought a term paper, cause I didn't feel like researching uh, watersheds. Right. You know, okay. <laughs> that was why I wanted to work on my film. Right, so right. I remember back then, this was like before the internet was like really pumping with that shit. I had to go to Rutherford and stand in line, and like I looked through all these topics in a room inside a file cabinet and bought a paper oh, really? on watersheds and I handed it in and the teacher not all, all right not I mean I changed it up to make it a little dumb like I wrote it you know I took yeah. out all the smart words and uh <laughs> you, your but, paper was just like watersheds <laughs> what the fuck I was <laughs> sweating man because I I I I submitted and I'm like I get kicked out of college I right. get caught I'm done my and I was almost the end of college so yeah, it was I'm like just, a really awful time to get kicked out of college not like first week yeah, yeah. First semester, and I'm sweating, and I don't. And she made me sweat. I, I felt she knew because, like, she said she started telling the class how amazing my paper was. <laughs> I'm oh. Like, oh my god, I'm gonna get caught. She's, I'm gonna get caught. And was, I couldn't live with myself. But once that was over, and like, I didn't get caught. Right. But you're like, this dude who may or may not have stolen it. It's like he had to be watching this, not feeling as good. Like. Like, how do you 100%. feel good about your your thing getting on TV when you're like, that wasn't even my idea? Like, how do you not? He's right. got to feel like shit. You would think. Or he's like, no, I saw fucking me. It, it, it was part of the idea, but doesn't they'll justify it. I'm surprised his name hasn't come out yet. <laughs> That's my, but my thing is that you can't hold someone accountable in a writer's room. You know who submitted it. It isn't doesn't just I mean. So we're clear. If there's ten writers, they don't just throw their fucking ideas in a pool and you pick it out. It's like this is Joe Schmo's idea. Yeah, you pitch it. Yeah, this was my pitch, Johnny fucking idea. This is my idea. And it's like, oh, the Zillow thing. Where'd you get it from? Oh, I was thinking you were thinking about it. You know what it is? It's not even the fact that it's a Zillow thing, because like, I mean, I, I think anybody come up with that idea. Because that's what oh, makes it what? funny is it's very relatable, right? Yeah, but I don't think so, man. But like, it's it's the, you... the the thing that it's the it's the it's the specifics of the joke which makes it where you could tell well, it was, it was stolen. Zillow. 
It was Zillow. Yeah, it could have been true. Like you think, if this guy was blatantly stealing, he would have made it like Trulia or no? Because Trulia. Zillow is the most popular. Yeah, I know, but it's like if you're trying to not. No, but get I'm caught. on national television now. Nah, it ain't about that. I'm on NBC, Saturday Night Live. It's going to be the most popular website that I use. Yeah. I'm not trying to shove it under the radar. This was my idea. Oh, you got a comic who did the joke? Oh, wow, that's fucked up. This was my idea, though. I thought it was funny. Yeah. I don't think it's that easy of a no-brainer that... No, not no-brainer. I mean, topic. I mean, topic. I, mean, I don't but, know. But topic of like... Could, no, I'm saying, wife? could I see it being a parallel thinking if it was just basic about... Like, as basic as a couple... Like using Zillow. Sharing real estate is, I don't see that. I would have never, I, you, I would be hard pressed to find a hundred comics. If I threw out the topic, how do you older couple texting each other? Would they come up with, oh, they do real estate instead. I can't, I mean, that's just, yeah, no, I, I mean, a I'm real not real original thought. Yeah. Think about it. Think no, about but what I'm shows. saying is, though, because so many people liked it, because it was so popular, because it was so relatable, because it's like, it, but, but like, it's not like, like, you know, like there's, there's topics out there, like, like you see comics do, you're like, only that person can think of that. Listen, relatable. Hot Pockets. Right. Jim Gaffigan's Hot Pocket joke. No one did it. And it's relatable because everyone's like, oh, my God, it is hot. Like, like yeah. But no one thought about it. Just yeah. you no, I believe it. it was stolen. I'm just saying it's like. No, I'm saying just because it makes it something so relatable doesn't mean it's that easy of a topic to grab. Yeah. It's just nobody shined the light on it that way before. Right. And then you look at it and go, oh, my God, that's fucking hilarious. That is so true. That's me and my wife. We look at those pictures all the time like, oh, one day. like, But no one would have thought to make a joke out of it. Yeah. I just think when it comes to writers' rooms, it's very easy. They can find out who did it and hold them accountable. That's it. Yeah. Let me see. You, let me you show your work on paper. Let me see where you came up with this idea. Let me see how it started. Yeah, I guess it's hard to vet things. I guess you just go on the honor system. And vet. It's honor. Yeah. yeah, that's why I don't get mad at like comics who have writers and they're like, you know someone wrote that or stole that. Right. You know, like they, they back in the day before the internet, they, they they said like these writers for like for late night shows and sitcoms would be sitting in comedy clubs listening to ideas and stealing them. Mm-hmm. That's how they came up with ideas. And I mean, maybe it's not stealing when we are on stage putting it out there for the universe to take. Yeah, like another com- stand up comedian doing it next door at a club after just hearing you do it. Is scumbag move, but if I write, if I'm a fiction writer and I'm sitting in and I listen to your joke and I hear you say about your your dad and your brother and you make fucking bullets with ashes, mm-hmm. and I think that's a funny little twist. I'm gonna put in my character story. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Like, oh, that's a story you told. I thought it was funny. I put it into my book. Well, that was. I mean, the the uh, yeah. The I mean, for years it was like the. Whoever gets it on the more the more famous person that gets to do it on TV, that's their bit. <laughs> Even if right, you wrote it, to me, it's, to me that sucks. It I'm does talking suck. about like a, a total different genre. I took your joke and I made it a sketch. Yeah, it's not right. I'm saying not in this situation, but back in the day, if I'm sitting in a in a comedy club and I hear a funny idea and I'm writing a horror movie and I put it in, mm. I wouldn't do that. But right. if someone did that, will we have? Would you have a leg to stand on? You made that. You sat up there and put it out there. And it sunk into my psyche. I'm like, oh, I like that idea. Oh, that's only your idea now? Yeah. You know? Paul Bond said, Arsenio's writers are legendary for going to clubs to steal jokes. I've heard that before. Yeah. Well, that's, 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 um, that's you know, that's why, like, uh, mo- like you can't, j- like, movie studios and production companies don't want to take, they don't take your script, like, it's cold sending it to them. Right, because they don't know where it came from. Well, no, they don't want to read it, and then and then whatever. That. Say five years down the road, hey, I got this idea, and then you get right. sued. It's like they want like a paper trail, right, right, of everything, and then they'll buy it if they, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And that's why, you know, and, and that's why you, you shouldn't even tell your ideas to people. Right. Because people just think they came up with this shit. This shit happens on my low level of. But like, on stand up, as a stand up comic, you're, that's your job is you're telling your jokes. Oh, yeah. You tell your jokes. Yeah. Your whole, it's, it's a, it's, you can't have intellectual property as a stand up comedian. You can't, you can't copyright a, an idea. You can't. A bit, a story. You can't. You can't do it because there's no way to prove. Right. It's all it. You know what it is. The only way to prove is the first one to get it on tape. Right. Kind of like music, I guess. You know. But look at what he had it out on a, a special, and now it's a sketch, and he can prove that he did it. But so now what? It'd be interesting to see. I. I. I that's why I'm, I'm intrigued to see how it plays out. Um, I've, I fear that it's just going to fade in right. business as usual and he'll get no compensation. But you know, SNL should hold somebody accountable, find the writer, find out where he gave the idea. Let me see your work. Show me where you started. Show me your, cause if you're a good writer, there's somewhere in there going from three weeks ago to you had Zillow. Zillow. Yeah. He's be like, yeah, I mean, my girlfriend looked at Zillow and I thought of the fucking idea. Parallel thinking. Where is it parallel it's thinking right is the is the is the excuse for all joke things. Oh yes, yep. Parallel, it's parallel thinking. You know what I mean? Yeah. There are prolific parallel thinkers out there. Fucking. <laughs> that's the kind. Of, I don't know, whatever. Any. Well, I, I, before we go, like, uh, I think I told the story before. Um, John, I was at. I used to do a joke um, online dating, mm-hmm. and uh, there was a joke. There was um a thing about photos, pictures. And I, I used to do a joke about, you know, up here, everybody's got one chin from this angle. You know, down here is three yeah, chins. Yeah. Up here's one, that kind of thing. And then like, I was talking about how women put pictures online and they always look smiling and happy. I don't need to see that picture. What I need to see is, all right, take care, Paul. Peace out, Paul. Um, uh, two funny fuckers. Um, so, uh, I used to say girls should put a picture up on their on their page of what they look like when they're going to be miserable and angry, <laughs> because that's what I'm going to see most of the time. It's like, show me a picture of what you look. I want to invent it. This is my joke. I took it further. I want to invent an app that doesn't Photoshop you. Then you take a picture. You put a scenario in, like he forgot to take the garbage out again, and then it changes your face mm-hmm. to what I'm going to see because I'm going to forget to take the garbage out. All the time. That's I didn't funny, even see what man. that face looks like. Right? That was my joke where I took it. So I was doing it on stage at Gotham and John Fish was there. And John Fish came up to me and said, Dude, I did that joke on Letterman. So he went on stage and I looked at his Letterman while he was on stage. And he had a joke, the first part of my joke, which was show me a, a face where you're disappointed with life's choices. Because I'm going to see that face every morning. Yeah. And he had the same joke. I need to see a picture of what you look like when you're disappointed with life choices because that's the face I'm going to always see. Now, I did not take it from him. Right. It's just part of the online jokes that I, you know, and like I said, I expanded it into the app, into more stuff. And when he came off stage, I'm like, dude, I never saw that joke, but I won't ever do it again. And I never did it again. Even though there was more to it, the app was different. All of that was way different than his joke. Yeah, but yeah. When you over. learn that it's close, or like you just got to dump it. Like there was a joke yep. I did years ago. It was like about like the way my grandparents' face changed when they got old, when they're older. Like they they like stuck in whatever. I said they, they were. They get to a certain age where you're stuck in whatever mood you were in. Right. At right. that age, and it was like my grandma smelt one of my grandpa's farts and it was stuck with her face like up like this. Yeah, yeah. But then, like, Bill Burr did this whole thing about old people and their faces being stuck up and stuff. And it was just so, yeah, yeah. so good, better than mine. And I'm like, I just feel like a fool trying to do this. Right. Because it's not, I don't, I don't, can't do anything more with it. And it just looks like right, a right. shittier version of what he does. Right, right. You know what I mean? So I just took it out. Right. You know, because I don't want you to be like, I, you know, that's, I don't know, as a comedian who has integrity, I, take very seriously my reputation absolutely as far as originality yeah, in my act i don't ever ever want you to think i do right. things like that and the moment i find out yeah you know what i mean 
Yeah. But I would, yeah. And the difference between me and you is like, yeah, you can tell the difference between mine and Bill Burr's because mine stunk. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? I didn't steal right. his good one. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> and worsen it. Right. Oh, and, it and it was a topic that shitty. like, and it was a topic that, you know, isn't far fetched for anyone to think of, you know. Right. Old people with stuck, like, weird faces yeah, being stuck I there. Stopped doing, I stopped doing the joke, all the other parts of the joke, because my lead in was the pictures you put online. I need to see what you're going to look like now. Yeah. And that was my lead in. So I tried to figure a way to do it without that other part and just be like, you know, the girls post pictures online. I need to see them in different scenarios but it was like it's 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 when it come from that idea that original idea yeah of i need to see your face not you know disappointed with life choices like that's where it comes from and although i never saw him do it ever once i didn't take it not even for a second but it's so exactly what he said i'm like well everything that falls after it i'm just gonna abandon fuck it so i don't need it and he's a comic that you respect in the business. Absolutely. And you know what I mean? It's not like. Yeah. It, yeah. No. So. Yeah. And I never wanted him. I'm, I'm like, I always. Because it ain't worth the, the one minute or two minutes no. you're getting out of it. And I'm always worried. I'm like, I know we talked about it and I never did it again. Ever, ever, ever. But I'm like, does he think I took it and then he caught me? And I'm, 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 I'm sure. I doubt it. He doesn't act like he did, but I'm always like, I hope to fucking God he didn't because I never even saw him do his act. Never mind is that joke. No, nah, but I, I think if he was like that, he probably wouldn't even have told you and be like, fucking Gaffney doing my joke. Like, I feel like he did like a colleague thing where you're like, Absolutely you know what I mean? No, like, because that's what you yeah, would yeah. do is be like, hey, man, you know, right. but this is my bit I've been doing. You know what I mean? Right, right. I feel like if you didn't like somebody you wouldn't you wouldn't put it out there he said i did that on letterman which to me meant like don't try to expand that joke anymore because i've already burned it right that's how i kind of took it yeah it's like you going up and trying to rework hot a new hot pocket material right (laughs) right yeah exactly he's like like, i already used it and like like i said i've been doing that part of the joke, probably a few months. I've been doing all the online dating jokes for a while. The pictures and the faces and all that stuff was a few months. So the and the app was like two times. So when he saw me, I was like on the third, second or third time working the app joke. Mm. But it all came from I need a a picture of what you look like when you're disappointed with life. And I think that's a common, th- not that everybody would say it on stage, but a common thought when you're looking at all these girls, because there's so many things of pictures, like oh, there, there's so many ways you can make fun of pictures online dating. And that was the next step. Mm. Like, I need to see what you look like when you're sad. I like the idea. It's a shame. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's a shame. But anyway, I really got to pay. All right, man. Let's um, wrap it up. So, uh. Everybody, um, if you're listening on YouTube, uh, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, if you're listening to audio, go to youtube.com slash Joe Fernandez to subscribe. And uh, we appreciate you guys checking us out. Um, we'll see you next week. Thanks for listening and watching All in Our Heads. Good night.